Hey, well, good morning on this Christmas Eve. Pastor Stephen Street, look where I'm at. This is Krispy Kreme Donuts and the hot and now donut sign is on. Is that not awesome? Yes. So when we were on our youth retreat a couple of weeks ago in Tennessee, we were driving into Gatlinburg and we happened to pass a Krispy Kreme on the parkway. And I, I told the youth that on our way back, if the hot and now sign is on, We'll stop and we'll get some hot and fresh donuts. But if it's not on, we're not going to stop. And so we went on into Gatlinburg and we came back through. And surely enough, the sign was not on. And I'm like, well, you know, that's a sign. We don't need to go there. We're not going to get any donuts. And Karen's sitting in the passenger seat and she says, well, so what? If I want a donut, we can go to Krispy Kreme and get a donut whether the sign is on or not. I'm going in and I'm coming out with something. But she was okay with us not stopping because we'd had a pretty big dessert at CC's Pizza with the youth group. And so we, we drove on down through uh, Sevierville, where our hotel was, and there was another Krispy Kreme. And I thought to myself, well, you know, guys, if the sign is on, that will be a sign we need to stop. And unlike this sign being on, the sign was not on. So we didn't stop. Well, I am happy to say that I'm here at this Krispy Kreme Donuts and the sign is on and guess what? They are making hot, fresh Krispy Kreme Donuts. And that's a sign to me that I'm going to need to get me one of these donuts before I finish this video this morning. Just so happens to be, I don't know how well you can see in there, but they are making them. And I'll tell you what, there they come. They're starting to come through right now. And look at that angelic glaze that's being poured over those donuts. Man, there is nothing like a hot Krispy Kreme glazed donut. I mean, it just melts in your mouth. Well, I'm telling you all this because so many times in our walk with Christ, we're looking for an obvious sign, you know, for a light to be on, when indeed God has already placed within us what he desires us to do. And we don't necessarily need some outward visible sign saying, yes, here's a sign from God. And when we think that we need that sign, sometimes that's a fear or insecurity that we have. You know, God shows up in some pretty magnificent ways, but he also shows up in some pretty humble ways. I mean, we just look at the birth of Christ and how he entered into the world. I mean, it was a scandalous story when he came into our world as an infant. He was, he was born to a, a teenage girl, an impoverished family. He was from a town of nobody. I mean, he grew up in a carpenter shop, working in a carpenter shop. So, folks, that just tells you that when we expect something grandiose and great, God sometimes surprises us in the small and the meek and the humble. And so I hope that this Christmas Eve, you'll begin to realize that the manger, that the cross and the resurrection of Christ may not have been the signs that people were looking for. They were looking for something magnificent. But indeed, he came in this world in a very simple way. The people were expecting him to be a mighty warrior. And yet he took on the weight of the world's sin. Some would say he was a cursed Messiah because he was crucified. He resurrected from the dead, and he revealed himself to some, but not everybody. But today he reveals himself to us through the power of his Holy Spirit and through the body of Christ. And so as we continue this service of Christmas Eve together, may the light of Christ burn brightly in you. And I will tell you, it's greater than any hot and now sign. And as good as these Krispy Kreme donuts are, and man, are they good? And I plan on getting me one. Guess what? You're going to receive a fresh, hot, Krispy Kreme donut if you're good little boys and girls at the conclusion of the service today. Merry Christmas. Hey, you guys, I'm still here at Krispy Kreme. This is Hannah, and she's going to tell you what a sign means to her. A sign means to me, even though you have Jesus all the time, you may not feel like it. You may not feel that Jesus is listening to you and he's answering your prayers, but he is. Even though we may not have the light on, we still have the light of Jesus. We may not see it all the time, but he's always there and he's always giving us and always hearing our prayers. So I just want you to know 
that even though you may not feel it, he's always there right next to you. Amen to that. Thank you, Hannah. Praise the Lord. Let's give a holy hand raise. Yeah, praise Jesus. Yeah, holy hand raise. How about that? I want to thank my, my friend Doug Sullivan. He gave me the inspiration for the, uh, the Krispy Kreme sermon today. And I, I prayed about that. I said, Lord, do you really want me to do that? It's Christmas Eve. I think they're going to want something more holy and sacred and, and, and awe-inspiring. And the Lord was like, well, Krispy Kreme, do you need to say anything else? I mean, the Scripture does say, taste and see that the Lord is good. I mean, we're, we're going to taste something really good in just a little while. And I apologize in advance for those of you who uh, didn't take your insulin today. Um, so take it... So take it home with you, okay? So in my, my little Krispy Kreme encounter, I've got a few encouraging words for you today, this evening. If you're waiting on a sign from God to do what God has already put inside you to do, you might be messing up. And I can tell you this from experience. We want these obvious signs, you know? Just go back with me. Centuries ago, the people were wanting an obvious sign that the Messiah would come in this grandiose way. And yet, the scripture was fulfilled. He came exactly the way the prophets predicted he would come. But I'm going to tell you something. There's times in my life when I've really messed up waiting on God to give me a sign. You know, if God wants me to do this, he'll give me a sign. He'll, he'll show me this. And it's easy to do that. And if I'm honest, when I do that, I'm probably letting fear and doubt overcome me, and I, I justify it by saying, I'm waiting on a sign for God. I'm not going to act yet. I'm waiting on this sign from God. And what I needed to do is exactly what I said in the video. Stop chasing the sign from God and just start chasing God. Go after him. He's come after you. Go after him. And he will welcome you and he will receive you. And the beauty of it is he's never left. You may have walked away. You may have left. You may have been dormant in your faith for a while. For whatever reason, life happens, folks. And our priorities get kind of mixed up. But he says to us through Jesus, I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. So when you're ready... I'll be waiting with arms open wide. I need to be more like my wife, Karen, though. I really do. Sign or no, no sign, I'm going in there, and I'm going to come out with something. And you know, it's okay to come to church on Christmas Eve and say that. To hope that maybe God is going to say something to me. Maybe he's going to speak to me. And I believe he will when you enter into this campus and you walk into these doors and you surrender to him. The scripture says it beautiful in Romans 12. It says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, to offer yourselves as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your form of worship. Just offer yourself. That means holding your hands up. That means closing your eyes and just being in the presence of the Most High God and offering yourself and thanking Him for all that He's done for you despite you. You see, just like Krispy Kreme, the light might not be on, but if you go in, most likely you're going to get a donut regardless. If you go through the drive through you're going to get something. It may not be a hot, fresh donut. I mean, it, it might be a, a lemon-filled one. Those are pretty good. Might be one of those sour cream donuts. Those are nice. Or my wife's favorite, and she's going to get mad at me. The chocolate covered cream field. That's all you're thinking about now, isn't it? Do you want me to share with you how many calories is in one of those? I'm not going to do it. I would, if I ate one of those, I would need to run all the way back to Winter's Chapel Road and back here just to burn that off. I'm not going to do that. You're not either. Your little glazed one only has, listen to this, you're going to love this. It only has 125 calories. That's not so bad, is it? You can cheat tonight. Doesn't count. You see, you don't enter into the presence of God without coming out with something. Even if you didn't intend to. 
if you come in and you open yourself to him, you're going to leave out with something. He's going to move in you. He's going to do that tonight, folks, this very evening. I can assure you of that during this service. And as our dear, precious Okoa told our teenagers on their winter retreat, she says every Sunday at Misty Creek, she says, I feel born again. She told our teenagers that. Do you know what it's like to be born again? Do you know what it's like when you approach Christmas and Christ is born anew in your heart? Well, Steve, I was born again back in 1976, 1982, or 2008 on that youth retreat or whatever it was. But to let him, let him in again. Make your heart his Bethlehem. Make your heart and your life his home and a living testimony for who he is and what he came to accomplish and what he did accomplish through you. You see, God broke down the walls that separated us from him by giving us Christ. We can have an intimate relationship with him. A nearness unlike anything you could experience. So when I see the manger, the cross, and the empty tomb, that's my sign. And it's shining brighter than any donut sign ever could. But I will say it is a brilliant marketing tool, isn't it? You may not know which directing God you may not know which way God is directing you, but you know that the way He's directing is going to go through Him. I want everything to go through him. If it's not going through him, if it's not from him, if it's not his idea, if it's not his prompting, then I want to fail at that. I want to be in line with his will, his desire, his call for my life. Because I know if I go my own way, I'm going to fail miserably. I'm going to fall flat on my face, constantly trying to look for some sign. Instead, I want to be looking for him. And the beauty of being a pastor standing up before you is that I'm looking at him right now. The beautiful body of Christ is who you are. You represent him. Jesus tells us in the Gospel of Matthew, you are the eyes, the ears, the nose, the, the mouth. You're the body of Christ. And when the body of Christ is active and moving around here, we say, the body in motion. I did win a breakdancing contest in 1988. I'm not going there tonight. I would break something if I did. So don't chase after that neon sign. Instead, go chase after God. And if I'm honest with you, His goodness is always running after you, wanting you to come back. I've got you, my child. I love you. I'll take care of you. I'll provide everything that you need, not everything that you want, but everything that you need. He promised us that, that we would not need to be worried. He says worry doesn't add one second, one day, one minute to your life. It only takes away. I'll provide what you need to eat or you need to sleep and your clothes and all those things. I will take care of you. And you know how he does that many times? He does that through the body of Christ. He does that through others. When sometimes we don't necessarily need a handout, we just need a hand up. And I'm so pleased to say that after last night's night of Christmas worship, which, by the way, there were 300-plus people in this place last night. Thanks be to God. The wings were full. It was full in here. People downstairs, thank you for the generous gifts to three of the mission organizations that we support in our community. Thanks to you and your generosity and this missional church, there are people who will have food, shelter, and clothing. And 40 kids will have Christmas gifts to open tomorrow thanks to your generosity and your humility. That's what Christmas is all about. Now, this good news is better than any hot glazed donut. It is. But you're still going to get one. But tonight when you get that donut, it's a reminder indeed of how good God is 
And it's so much better than any meal that you had. Now, I will tell you today, I'm so proud of my wife and the meal that she prepared for us this afternoon. My gosh, if I went through all of it, you'd wonder how I'm still standing here. It was amazing. But you know what was more amazing? Was to have my mom and dad all the way from Florence, South Carolina, usually six or seven hours away, but because there's a bridge out in Columbia, more like a nine-hour trip for them, to have my mother-in-law with us as well, to have my son, and to know that our daughter is doing four Christmas Eve services in Greer, South Carolina. She's the children's minister there. She'll join us later tonight. She wasn't with us. But to be around that table and to share memories and stories and to hear a prayer off of my phone that was prayed here over a year ago during our bluegrass service when my father-in-law prayed over our meal. God rest his soul as he's in eternity now. To pray that prayer and have that time of worship together before we had that meal and to have that fellowship and to sit around that table. Isn't it interesting that it takes Christmas, Thanksgiving, and Easter to get us together finally around the table? Why don't we get together more often than that? Why don't we make it, even if we got folks out of town, let's make it more often than that, to be with each other, to check on each other, to hear how everyone's doing. I'm going to light the Advent candle now. And as I do that, I'm very mindful that just in this Worshiping community alone, we've experienced a lot of loss in our families, our church family. Many of you are here tonight. This is your first Christmas without a loved one, and your heart's very heavy. My heart's heavy, too. But I want you to know something, folks. I want you to pay attention to these candles and what these candles represent. As we go through our earthly losses. We have the greatest hope, the hope of eternity. And we have that hope because of a babe born in Bethlehem. Hope has a name, and that name is Jesus. There's no other name above that name. We have that promise within us, a hope everlasting, Eternity. Jesus said in John 14, I go as to prepare us the place for you. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I go to prepare a place for you? I'm not going to leave you orphaned. And he prepares a place for us too, as he has our loved ones. And then that candle of love. Without Christ, there's no love in this world. True love comes from God. The Greek form of that is agape. It's unconditional love. It has no barriers, no boundaries. To love one another with the love of God. And to love our family during these holidays, even when we experience the sadness that life can often bring. Excuse me. Joy. One of my favorites. The joy of the Lord is my wife. Strength. What's the joy of the Lord? It's not the joy of this world. It's not just happiness. Happiness fades. Joy is everlasting and, and eternal. God gives us that joy. And one day, folks, one day we'll experience eternal joy. And we will not have tears of sadness or sorrow. There will be tears of great joy and jubilation as we are with those who go on before us. That great cloud of witnesses that the author of Hebrew talks about. We're surrounded by them this very moment. One of my favorite candles that Ashlyn lit for us last week. Peace. Jesus says, I give you my peace. My peace I give unto you. I do not give to you as the world gives. 
in this world, you'll have all kinds of trouble and heartaches. But take heart, I've overcome the world. You see, his peace is the peace that passes all understanding. And tonight, my favorite candle, I just said the pink one was, but this is really my favorite one, it's the Christ candle. It's the one that represents Adonai Elroy, the God who sees. Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Shalom, Adonai, Elohim, El Shaddai, Emmanuel, God is with us. He is here. Christ is our Savior. And tonight as we prepare to sing, I'm going to ask a few of our ushers if they would make their way forward. We're going to light candles together. We're going to sing that beautiful song, Silent Night, that we all love so much. And as I gave instructions last night to the folks worshiping at a night of Christmas worship, when the candle comes around to you, you take your unlit candle, excuse me, and you light your candle from the lit candle, just like that. The psalmist reminds us even though we might say to the day become night the light become darkness in him the darkness is of light the night is as bright as the day for in him there is no darkness only light <laughs> 